today we are discussing uh, coccidiosis in sheep and goat it is highly economic important disease and most neglected disease in sheep and goat coccidia is caused by a variety of aimeria species so that aimeria species include aimeria caprina aimeria hirsi aimeria cristiceni aimeria arlongi then aimeria ninoco well movi then ovina asta and bolloni so these are the species of the coccidia that can be seen in sheep and goat in india oocysts are shed, uh, shed in feces they get sporulated and infect the host and it is the cycle of seven day cycle so oral fecal contamination is the biggest source of the transmission of the coccidia predisposing factor includes the poor cleanliness in farm poor poorly managed farms faulty feeding habits mixing of different age groups together like kids growers adults and pregnant animals when they are kept in a single shed or the single room or a single compartment in that case there are much more chances of the transmission of the disease then pathogenesis is equal to life cycle so it is very simple life, uh, life cycle uh, it doesn't require any uh, intermediate host for the uh, propagation of the coccidia so first there is a Uh, shedding of oocyst or the oocytes in the feces they get uh, there is a sporogony then the sporulated oocyst are get consumed by the uh, sheep and goat then the sporozoites are formed a sexual and sexual reproduction of the coccidial oocyst that that can be observed in the intestinal tract of the sheep and goat and again after 7 days again there is a shedding of the uh, mature oocyst here again you can see this circle is saying that the there is a development of the developmental stages of the coccidia in environment so here uh, from the oocyst they are shedded through the feces uh, unsporulated oocyst they become sporulated the sporulated oocyst on zero day they will be consumed by the uh, host that is sheep and goat and that lead to the changes into the uh, sporozoite they get uh, there is a release of sporozoites and the sporozoites will be uh, infect to the other uh, cells uh, like uh, enterocytes or epithelial cells of the in, uh, intestines and the further life cycle is continuously going on there is a multiplication and there may be the reinfective stages within the intestines some of the sporocytes again infect the new cells of the intestines or the uh, epithelial cells of the intestines and uh, further the multiplication of the coccidial oocysts that can be observed and the uh, cytosols are formed again the merozoites are formed from that there is a male and female gametes are formed and after that there is a, a final oocyst that can be shedded through the Uh, feces and again there is a reinfection so this is the this is about the life cycle and the combinedly pathogenesis pathogenesis of the uh, oocyst of the aimeria so during this phase uh, whenever there is a release of sporozoites in the gut that that will lead to the severe inflammatory reaction into the uh, intestinal tract and uh, the pathogenesis of aimeria is based on the number of oocyst consumed by the host if the large number of oocyst consumed by the host then there there are chances of the acute type of aimeria or the acute, acute type of coccidia if the less number of uh, aimeria oocyst consumed by the host maybe sheep or sheep and goat then there are chances of the chronic type of aimeria or chronic coccidiasis and that is most dangerous for the sheep and goat here again the same thing is there the uh, sporulation then the male female gametes are formed the oocyst starts shedding in feces this gets sporulated and they they get reinfected to the sheep and goat now clinical signs of the uh, coccidia so there are two types of clinical signs that is acute that mostly op- observed in the young animals and as well as it is depend upon the number of oocysts consumed by the host then chronic or subclinical coccidia is observed in the adult and growing animals number of oocysts may be less and but the, there is a recurrent infection recurrent infection to the small ruminants and there is a small numbers of oocysts lead to the progressive enteropathy and malabsorption syndrome it is one of the biggest pathological condition that observed in the intestine that lead to the uh, different types of uh, body reaction to these coccidia and that lead to the heavy economic losses so we will see that different losses also so clinical signs of the acute persistent diarrhea Uh, generally uh, blood bloody diarrhea or uh, blood in the feces will be there uh, especially observed in the young animals then there is a fishy or uh, fetid smell to the feces 
uh, sometimes there is a colic and if not treated within time, so sudden death may be observed because of the extensive inflammation and extensive bleeding into the intestinal tract. That can be observed in the acute type of coccidiosis in sheep and goat. Uh, generally, uh, growing animals or the uh, small uh, young ones are mostly affected by this acute type of coccidiosis. Then clinical signs of the subacute or chronic type of coccidia, watery, pasty, uh, and fetid smell diarrhea in adults, continuously wasting the body condition, body score is continuously progressively lost in that animals. Then progressive anemia, as we know, this, this uh, coccidia can cause a dyshemopoietic anemia, means the simply the absorption of nutrients is completely hampered by the uh, coccidial uh, multiplication into the intestines. So whatever the proteins are required for the synthesis of hemoglobin, iron required for the synthesis of hemoglobin is completely stopped because of the entropathy that can be observed because of the chronic inflammatory reaction into the uh, digestive tract, especially the small intestine and large intestines. Because of the anemia, the, there is a respiratory, uh, respiratory distress, salivation will be there, uh, uh, salivation will be there. A frothy material or the froth into, into the oral cavity, then ex exercise intolerance. The animal will not go uh, for the walking for a longer distance. Then decreased libido in case of male, there is a decreased libido. Animal will not able to mount and will not able to conceive the females. Then losing the condition, low body score. Many times the animal looks very uh, uh, having the uh, very dull skin, uh, skin coat, then poor uh, health, health conditions, rough hair coat, dull hairs, and alopecia many times can be observed. Then hide and bone appearance will be there, and repeat breeding is one of the common findings that can be observed because of the uh, sub subacute or chronic type of coccidiosis. So basically, chronic coccidia, it, it, it is characterized by, characterized by the watery pasty diarrhea, fetid smell will be there, West, wasting will be there, progressive anemia is there, and because of anemia, there is a lung edema, respiratory distress will be there, salivation will be there, and uh, exercise intolerance, and in case of male, there is a decreased libido. Losing condition day by day, uh, there will be the poor body score, uh, then uh, poor and dull skin coat, a rough hair coat, then the dull hairs or alopecia will be observed hide and bone appearance and repeat bidding is one of the common findings. The repeat bidding is in the same manner because of the entropathy, the whatever the nutrients which are required for the maintenance of the pregnancy, maintenance of the uh, uterine milk will not be available for the uh, uterus and ultimately that lead to the death of the embryo. So uh, ultimately that lead to the repeat bidding in the sheep and goat. Now postmortem lesions. So acute type of lesions, it is characterized by the anemia, blood clots in small intestines. Then sometimes uh, we will get the lung edema, small white proliferative lesions and slept mucosa in the intestines, small amount of serous fluid in abdominal cavity and thoracic cavity, enlarged mesenteric lymph nodes and lymphatics. Lymphatics will be enlarged, lymph nodes will be enlarged. Then postmortem lesions of the subacute and chronic type of lesions, the pale mucous membranes, by boiled egg, egg white type of mucous membranes, then pale subcutaneous tissues and musculature, a small white proliferative lesions in the abomasum and intestines, enlargement of subcutaneous lymphatics, then lung edema will be there, hydrothorax, ascites, enlarged mesenteric lymph nodes, and gelatinous transformation of adipose tissue. So, so gelatinous transformation by adipose tissue can be seen in the later stage of the chronic type of coccidiosis. So all these things are basically because of the gelatinous transformation of adipose tissues are mainly because of the, uh, as the entropy is there, the required amount of glucose or the energy is not available for the animal. So whatever the resources are available with the animal, like uh, at adipose tissues, they are started, converted into the gelatin gelatinous mass by the process of gluconeogenesis. And because of that, in case of chronic coccidiosis cases, we are getting gelatinous transformation of adipose tissues. So here we can see the uh, actual postmortem lesions so pale mucous membranes, you can see the completely egg boiled egg white type of mucous membranes. Here again, the same, same type of mucous membranes you can see over here. So <clears throat> it is an extreme uh, type of anemia that can be observed because of the entropathy caused by the coccidiosis. Then are the lymphatics are become enlarged. Generally, lymphatics are not uh, 
visible very clearly in the normal animals but whenever the, there is a entropathy and the uh, coccidia is there in that cases the lymphatics are much more prominent this is because of the accumulation of edematous fluid or the acidic fluid in the thoracic cavity as well as the, in the abdominal cavity so fluid is accumulated in the thoracic cavity abdominal cavity to relieve or remove that fluid the lymphatics has to work much more and that's why they are become more enlarged and edematous then we can see the gelatinous transformation of the adipose tissue of the subcutaneous tissue, especially uh, just below the mandible, submandibular areas. Then uh, the gelatinous transformation of adipose tissues around the omentum, abdominal cavity. So whatever the adipose tissues which are present around the heart, they may convert it into the gelatinous mass and the uh, animal uh, or the thoracic cavity or the all organs will be pale in color as well as we can see the gelatinous transformation of the adipose tissues over here. Here again the same thing, gelatinous transformation of adipose tissues of the uh, submandibular sub areas as well as the pericardial uh, fat. Then abomasum will show pinpoint small tiny white color nodules. Here you can see very small tiny white nodules that can be observed in the coccidiosis in the abomasal fold or the, in the mucosa of abo abomasum we are getting this small small white tiny type of material and if we take the scraping from these small white nodules we can get a lot of uh, imeria or the lot of coccidial oocyst into that so this we have to for the diagnosis uh, diagnostic purpose we have to take the scraping from these small white nodules uh, and crush within uh, between two slides and just observe uh, under the microscope by putting the cover slip we are getting large number of the oocyst into that particular area again the intestines will show the small proliferative type of lesions uh, small noodles they are formed over here throughout the intestinal tract and that may lead to the malabsorption and whatever the lesions we are noticed in the other animals this is because of the uh, changes in the into the mucosa of the small intestines they, that lead to the malabsorption. Uh, the whatever the nutrients are consumed by the animals, they will not be reached to the uh, particular organs or the all organs that lead to the entropathy. And entropathy finally lead to the uh, malabsorption syndrome. Diarrhea will be there, and finally there is a wasting of the animal. Again, the same same type of nodules in the abomasum, small 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 white nodules here. Then intestine will be having the small proliferative type of lesions. Here we can see the small white nodules throughout the intestine, small intestine as well as large, uh, large intestines. Here you can see the blood clots are also present into the large intestine. So these type of lesions can be seen in the ac acute type of coccidiosis. And microscopically, we are getting the operculated type of coccidial oocyst. So one at one end, there is an operculum and this is a oocyst we can see seen, uh, through the skin, uh, sorry, uh, through, the, uh, through the scraping of the intestine or the abomasum. Again, here the we can see the operculated type of oocyst. Diagnosis, it is based on the clinical signs. Then the fecal sample examination, postmortem lesions. Then uh, we have to take intestinal scraping or abomasal scraping for the final diagnosis. Here there is no much more need of the other uh, sophisticated test like ELISA, PCR or everything. So those uh, people are uh, much more interested in academics. Uh, they can go for the PCR, then uh, serotyping of the coccidial oocyst. But for the field condition, the simply intestinal scraping uh, or the fecal sample examination is sufficient to diagnose the disease. So through the fecal sample examination, either you can go for the uh, saturated salt or the saturated sugar solution, uh, put the material into the uh, one test tube, uh, and then saturated uh, salt or the sugar solution and the oocyst will come on the, by the floating and we can take the uh, a drop of that material on the uh, slide put on the cover slip and just observe under the microscope while doing the postmortem we can see the all postmortem lesions you know, whatever we have discussed earlier and besides that whenever we are getting the uh, small nodule nodular lesions or the uh, proliferative type of lesions just we have to take the scraping with the uh, scalpel blade put it on the slide uh, crush it uh, add few drop of normal saline and put the cover slip and observe under the microscope that is the simple way of the diagnosis of the coccidiosis then uh, treatment aspect of the coccidia generally 
normally available material or the medicine is the amprolium at the dose rate of the 7 mg per kg body weight for continuously 7 days. So there should not be break. Then uh, sulpaquinoxaline uh, through the either through the water for uh, at the dose rate of 0 0.015% for 3 to 5 days. Uh, then uh, diclazuril 1 ppm solution uh, once uh, single dose at the age of 6 to month age. Uh, then toltrazuril it's 20 milligram uh, per kg body weight single dose. Monensin 50 gram per ton of feed. It is a preventive dose that can be given to the uh, all animals. Then control, preventive treatment, then sanitation. Uh, sanitation of the farm. Sanitation is the most important uh, aspect for the uh, coccidiosis. Then cleaning, then uh, use of the lime whenever the, uh, the floor is not good. Then flame guns, it is one of the uh, good source or the good remedy for the control and the eradication of the uh, coccidia. Dry and wet washing, so uh, scrubbing uh, followed by the caustic soda washing. Then avoid oral fecal contamination. It is a very important factor for the control of the coccidiosis. So avoid oral fecal contamination. So this is the biggest thing that we have to follow in the farm. So generally what happened, the, the small kids are there. They are running here and there uh, through uh, their uh, feet or the, through their hoops. The infection from the ground will reach to the feeders and that again from feeder the other animals get infected. So uh, it's better to avoid the uh, pre, uh, pre type of kids. Th those kids are moving in the farm freely. We have to stop that and uh, keep all type of feeds just uh, above the ground level so that, so that they can cannot infect the feed material by their hoops or the feet. So it is a basic thing that we have to follow to control the coccidiosis. So this is about the all coccidiosis. Thank you. Thank you very much. If you want to connect with me, you can uh, contact me on WhatsApp at 8600891946. Thank you. Thank you very much.